Hopefully StreamYard's recording. Because I don't have a card in here today. Yeah, I think StreamYard's recording on their end. Should be. All right, let's go three, two, and one. Welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. I'm Jonathan Taylor, along with... Sean McCool. Sean, today we've got uh, quite a few things we're going to randomly talk about. Our yeah. flight. We're doing a flight of persuasion. We've got some things on testimonials, how to add testimonials very easily Yes, this uh, was this is really cool. It's the second time I've seen it. Yeah. And it got me both times. <laughs> um, so uh you know, that's always a good sign. If if you go through the entire process, whether it's yeah. a sale or anything else, you're like, Oh, it's one thing to see something that's cool, but you don't buy. Mm -hmm. You know? Because the real measure is do you buy it, right? Because right. Jonathan, you and I have been in those those presentations where it's like, Great presentation, Jonathan. We'll get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the kiss of death. <laughs> give so. us give us some time to uh, discuss it, and we'll get back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's it's the last like thing womp, you want to hear. Womp. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Oh, but great presentation, man. We really enjoyed yeah. the presentation. Yeah, we really that, did. That, that sucks. <laughs> well, you, if you were not yeah. uncomfortable during the presentation, <laughs> I did it wrong. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, um yeah, we've so, got some stuff. We're going to be talking about how to create better engagement on your website or keep people there longer. Um, yeah. this kind is of kind gamify. of interesting. Yeah. Gamify it a little bit. Gamify it. In increase the number of page views, mm -hmm. reduce bounce rate, stuff like that. Yep. Um, kind of cool. I've never Ooh. seen this done before, but, um, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that makes like perfect sense. Why wouldn't you do that? Like right. Why, why is everybody not doing that? Of course, if everybody yeah. was doing it, it wouldn't be effective. Mm -hmm. um, so there's we're something about that too. The mind just has to figure it goes back to, you know, our minds have to solve problems. We have to mm -hmm. figure things out. It's, it's like so, a riddle sort of. Yeah, exactly. And, and we'll, we'll reveal what it is later, but yeah, yeah. Well, we got to make our own open loops here. So you stick around, right? That's right. That's right. So, and then, um, I'll share since we're kind of in that vein of, you know, testimonials and some other stuff. Um, I'm going to also talk about referrals mm, and how okay. I used to get referrals and how you might could apply this to today with email marketing or uh, other things. So testimonials awesome. are one thing. Referrals are obviously another, but they're kind of this, a similar side, right? It's the follow up right. of happy customers. And you got something, um, you wrote hypnotic selling up here. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So I thought about talking about um, David Garfinkel. Have we had David on previously? I don't, I don't think so. I've been on his show years ago, probably okay. eight or nine years ago. I don't okay. think he was on. I didn't check. Um, yeah. He's like one of those quiet, um, unless you just happen to be in his world, like he's out there quietly doing his thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a, he's not a loud He's not a big marketer. He has a, he used to have a club, fast, effective copy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if that's still going or what, but um, I did an episode on that. Uh, yeah. One of the training blocks for fast, effective copy. So I think we did have him on now that, now that you yeah, say I that. I think we did. I'm pretty sure we did. Um, it's been a while. He's going to, he's got the reason we mentioned that he's got a new book out called Pers the persuasion story code. Yep. Uh, sure. The magic of, of conversational storytelling we're going to have, uh, we're going to try to get him back on for, yes. to talk about this book. So I'm not going to jump the gun, Sean, you, you're, you're going to get, be getting I'll, your copy. I'll reach out to him this week and yeah. <clears throat> but there's some crossovers up. from some things I was reading in that book with an article on hypnotic selling that Ooh. I'll get into a couple of things if we've got time today. So, so. this is not Joe Vitale hypnotic selling. This is, I guess that's hypnotic writing. That's right. That's a, yeah. a, a good book too, by the way. Yeah. If you haven't it checked it out. So yeah. Uh, Texas, Texas boy. Yeah, uh, that's right. I don't think he's from don't hear here. much from him anymore. He's kind of, I mean, he's kind of, he used to have like a really high profile. It seemed like back. Yeah. I mean, you know, in 15 years ago, should we have put Hormozy in the title of this to get extra juice <laughs> since everybody's talking about Hormozy this week? Hormozy. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I guess we missed that. So we yeah, we'll talk about, Hor we'll, we'll throw Hormozy in there just for the algorithm to sure, yeah. say Hormozy a few times. I can always add it back on. Do a little keyword <laughs> stuffing. Uh, did you watch that by the way? 
I did not. Yeah, I didn't either, but it, it well, was interesting. actually bits and pieces. I, I did catch some, I can't say I didn't watch any of it, but caught some. Well, the reason that that popped into my head is because, you know, Vitaly used to be everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the stuff Hormozy talked about, I mean, it's not new. It's like, it's been around forever. And like, sure. You know, and everybody's talking about, Oh, he gave away free stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's what even pagan was like all over the internet saying yeah. in 2012. Yeah. You know, which, um, yeah. So nothing new under the sun, right? No. That's no. why we got 320 <laughs> episodes of the same stuff over and over. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, just, uh, I mean, this is not for like uh, actual change your life stuff. This is just a place for me and Jonathan to drink beer. That's right. So. Talk about, talk about like, it's like we're actually sitting across from each other yeah. at a local establishment. Yeah. You got a very <laughs> tiny head, but yes. That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, all right, well, let's jump into the beer since that's really the point of the show. Exactly. Um, what do you have? You got a fancy website and everything to go with yours this week. Oh, I do. I and do. It's, I hope it's it interesting because a lot of beer sites are not that great. No, they're not. Look at this one. I just spilled some beer on my uh, soundboard okay. here. Oh, no. <laughs> $600 beer right there. Uh, this is called Speed Castle. Um, Look at that floating beer. I mean, if you, for those of you that just listen and don't ever check out our videos, you are missing out <laughs> on the special effects of this page that we're showing right now look at that see i couldn't give it the same effect i would just have to do like this <laughs> you should have worked on they should have got like some string and like <laughs> some of that magician thread that you can't see um this is interesting so the i love the can even though i'm i'm kind of part of me thinks uh is this a little bit satanic or what um yeah because it looks like it's got a little red black going it looks like kind of like it looks like a, a cross thing. Go ahead. Uh, you're probably going to say the same thing. Yeah, I was going to say a mix between Deadpool and Spawn. <laughs> oh, I was going to say between Satan and Predator. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I see a little Predator there. Yeah, it's got the that, that big head like the Predator. Yep. Yeah. So it yeah, says this... on the can, uh, Sean, it says, uh, so this is actually a Pilsner. So I, that's kind of the reason I, I picked it up. I was like, cool can art, but actually uh, it's uh, it's a Pilsner with about five, what is it, 5.6 ABV, okay. but it's called the World Ending Pilsner. It says, oh, wow. uh, <laughs> Annihilation is imminent as our newest year-round offering has arrived using hop source from German farms and hand-selected fresh or wet hops. Speed Castle is a crisp, refreshing Ultimate world ending Pilsner. <laughs> we are fascinated with the end of the world, aren't we? As a exactly. species, as a species, like we just so much. Yeah. Love to talk about how it's all gonna be terrible. <laughs> I know, crazy. I know. It's uh a dystopian. Um it, it's always di- very dystopian. Yeah. I mean, every time. You know, there's no there's no positive outlook. It's <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's weird. We need we need to work on that as a society. That's just that's right. yeah. can't be healthy. That's for that's sure. Right. So yeah, this is a very wild. Uh, like I said, most most beer sites just aren't that great. Uh, yeah, that's pretty think, clever, especially with the uh, little kind of like the um, you know the spotlight, the red spotlight uh, below yeah. the can. That's pretty cool. Cool effect. Yeah, it's like this floating, bouncing can. Yeah, so, kind of weird. I'm not sure the point. I'm not. I'm gonna say, Sean, this is a predator slash. What did you say, predator slash Satan? But I could see like, <laughs> I yeah, say Deadpool slash predator. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good good mix or Hellboy even. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's got a lot going on in that picture yeah. that I could see. So, uh, all right, yeah. what do you got? Yeah, so um, I'm going kind of old school. So I had a friend over this week. He brought Ooh. the beer. Ah. He brought a six pack and since there was two left, I was like, I'm just saving those for the podcast. So I have had these already this week. Sure. But yeah, this is from uh, new Belgium, which is one of the original big craft brew companies. <clears throat> um, and voodoo Ranger has been around for a while. Mm-hmm. And this is a juicy haze IPA. Ooh. So think- not our typical drink, um, but I can I already know kind of where I stand on it. Cause I've had, I've had a couple, um, and the juicy definitely saves it from being too much IPA. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a 7.5%. Uh, 
That sounds about right. Um, <laughs> I've had those right. juicy, juicy uh, hazy IPA. So yeah, it, yeah. It's very much like a almost like um, it's almost like a blue moon, really, because it's yeah. got that kind of Belgian mm -hmm. taste to it. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I already know what mine's going to be, be like, I've already drank half the first one. So, um, yeah, I like, this is another example of a site that's actually pretty good for, as far as beer sites go. Mm -hmm. Whole new Belgian brewing, uh, yeah. it's newbelgium.com. Um, but you know, they've been around a while. They're a big company. Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably one of the biggest craft brewers in the, in the world, I would think. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm having. They do a great job with those voodoo, uh, yeah, the voodoo ranger, voodoo, the whole voodoo yeah, series. series. Yeah. It's pretty good. Um, I thought you might like it since you're, you're a ranger, right? Huh? No, it wasn't a I ranger. ranger. I keep thinking you were, you were reconnaissance, right? Yeah. Recon. Okay. Yeah. You're probably, yeah. I can't imagine going through ranger school. I know. I know. I wanted to at the time, but I, I'm probably glad that I didn't. <laughs> It might have yeah. kept me in. <laughs> yeah, it might have kept you in, or it caught us caused a psychotic break. One of the two. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Not much in between. Um, yeah. So, Voodoo Ranger and whatever you've got there, but let's cheers it up. The Speed Castle. Speed Castle. All right. Let's see. Look at us with our fancy. Mm. beer appropriate glasses you've got a pilsner right. glass and i've got mm -hmm. an ipa glass yep this is the you remember this glass this is the one that has the etched bottom yes yeah just keeps on <clears throat> it's pretty cool that is cool all right what do you give yours one to five mm. i am a well mm -mm -mm. it's a good pilsner I'm gonna give it a. Uh, I'm gonna give it a four three. Nice. Four, yeah, I'm gonna give this a three eight. Three eight. Okay. Yeah. As far as IPAs, it's pretty good. Uh, you know, this IPA, like the juicy hazy, I can deal with. Mm -hmm. Some of the dark IPAs, I'm good with. Um, but a traditional IPA, not my thing. So, but this. Yeah. I give Man this for. A, I give this a three eight. So that's not an imperial. That's just a regular IPA, not the imperial. Correct. It's the juicy materials that get up like 9% or something. Yeah. Like so the juicy keeps it from being as bitter. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's the, the and it gotcha. keeps it from having that overpowering flowery taste. Yeah. Right. And you get a little more of the fruity taste. So <clears throat> I can, I can deal with that. All right. Well, let's jump in to, uh, where do we want to start? We want to start with the testimonials. Yeah, let's do that. I got to see this. Yes, yeah, so this was cool. Let me throw my screen back on. Uh, this again is one you might want to check out uh, if you are listening. You might want to check it out on the YouTube's or on our website, persuasionbythepint.com. So I got this email today, and the subject line was "Free hundred ninety dollars, hundred ninety seven dollar gift." Why? Because I can. I was like, okay, you got me. I'll open up. Um, and the email was, "Hey, Sean, this weekend is approaching, and I'm feeling feisty, so I'm going to do, I'm go, I'm just going to do something crazy and give you a hundred percent free upgrade of over four thousand automated tasks and twelve thousand new Chat GPT Pro prompts. So a little bit of context: I bought a product from Chat GPT Pro prompts in the past, about two mm -hmm. months ago. I've used it, enjoyed it. Um, I actually I bought, bought that too. Yeah, and I bought a second product from them." So okay. this email may be in your box. Okay. Um, and I bought a second product from them, but this is about the first. And then he says, no upsells, no credit card required, no free trial, just free for the next 48 hours. So there's a little bit of urgency there. On Monday, it'll be gone. Okay. Uh, we plan to sell this for $197 a pop to make an extra 50 to 100 grand. After all, a lot of our 6,000 plus customers told us we gave them the best value they've ever received. But then I also realized we'd never gotten where we were without you guys. A little flattery there. So before I realized I drank too much coffee, I'll go ahead and give away hundreds of hours of work for the next 48 hours. Uh, my prompt engineer will kill me. Instead of an accountant, I guess he's, his prompt engineer is going to kill him. Uh, the only thing that I would ask in exchange is a few seconds of your time so I can hear from you what the initial pro prompts package did for you, helped you with. 
blah, blah, blah. So here, um, and your permission to share the experience with others. So here it is. And you click on this link, click here to get your new, your 12th out. So he, you notice he didn't mention anything about other than this line here, a few yeah. seconds of your time. So I can hear right. what you, what hear from you helps you with. So you don't really realize it's going to a testimonial page, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so when you click on this, what happens is, and I will show you the software behind this in a minute. It goes to a landing page that they've created. It's, it's labeled with their stuff. It says, get a free upgrade of over 4,000 automated tasks, 12,000 new prompts. Um, just send us a video testimonial today to unlock them on their official release. And then it says quick testimonial guidelines, tells you what they are, gives you an example of the questions. And then there's a button down here you hit to just immediately record the video. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do like, you don't have to figure out how to load up your camera and all this stuff. So watch this. This is really cool. You click the big purple button and it pops up this window. Oh my gosh. Wow. It lets you pick your, um, it lets you pick your glasses and it lets you pick your microphone. And then when you hit record my video, it's almost just like a loom video. Mm -hmm. Just a little box pops. I don't want to hit it because I'm afraid it might conflict yeah. with StreamYard. Yeah. But what happens is it pops up a little box and above it are the three questions that they want you to answer. And then wow. the red button in the middle that says uh, record. <laughs> and you re and then it's got a countdown timer because they wanted it to be less than three minutes. So it's got a right. countdown timer that's on the screen that you can see the whole time. <laughs> and then when no you're pressure. done... <laughs> yeah. And then when you're done, you just hit send and it automatically sends it off to them. You don't have yeah. to do any editing. You don't have to do anything. Right. What if you mess up? Can you re-record? I think you can stop it and re-record. I, okay. I just did it like a yeah. quick, like I wasn't worried about it since I can't edit it. I was like, oh, whatever. Sure. I'll just send it. That's really cool. I mean, it, that's... Is, it, it really lowers the barrier. Mm -hmm. What's the main barrier people have with with doing videos like, Oh, I got to set up my computer or my phone or like, you know, sure, yeah. depending on the generation you're dealing with, you know, some people are just going to whip out their phone, mm -hmm. do a quick video. And, but even then, you know, you got to deal with file sizes and things like that. If you record too long and then will it go by email or will it, you know, all those things. So this takes all of that out of the equation and just allows you to, um, to go back to it. So I was like, well, this is really cool. I did mine. Um, and it sent back, and then uh, I said, well, I want to find out more about this software, because this is the second time John Benson uses it also. Right. So after I bought one of his products, he gave, and it seems to work best if you give someone like a free course or free mini course or free mm -hmm. something in exchange for the testimonial, right? Right. You got to give them something. Yeah. Um, so I went over, and it's called testimonial.to, not IO. It's okay. TO. To. Um, and I'm going to put the link, uh, I'm going to put the link in the chat for anybody that's watching or streaming. And we'll also put it on the, the notes right. page. It is a affiliate link. Um, so if you'd like to buy us a beer then <laughs> then sign up for this service yeah. through the thing, it's about, uh, so I looked at the pricing. It's, Probably for most people, it's going to be either $50 a month if you pay annually or 60 if you pay monthly because you're going to want the unlimited video probably mm -hmm. because otherwise it's only two video testimonials. But it looks like they have a feature to do text as well. So I'm not sure how that works. But to me, the magic is the video, right? I mean, yeah. you can send an email and get text mm -hmm. responses back, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, you're probably going to want this tier. And if you've got a, even a decent list or you're selling, you know, even two to three products a day and you did this once a month, it'd be worth every penny. Oh, of absolutely. 60 bucks. So that would be my recommendation is the premium, either $60 or if you pay yearly, you get like two months free basically. Um, and like I said, that is an affiliate link that I put in the, the what YouTube. they should do is, is that, is there an option for, does that transcribe for the text or I, I, how do they Ooh. collect the, um, I don't know. Okay. Because I'm wondering are, if they it has uh, Zapier integrations, it has API, it has webhook. So you could probably do pretty much whatever you wanted to, right? Right. You could, you could probably zap it to, you know, chat and get mm -hmm. it 
to transcribe. You yeah. Know? That's uh, really cool. Or have or have a VA transcribe it once you get it. But mm-hmm. I'm sure with a zap, you I know I mean there's already things that will transcribe a video out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you just zap the link to whatever that service is that you already have, then I think that's the way I would do it personally. Yeah. Oh, uh, what a great Yeah, and you can you can actually try it right on the you can try it for free. Mm-hmm. And it'll give you a little bit more. These are examples of what they look like you know, when they're done, Mm -hmm. um, it's got embed code so you can put it on your, on your site like they did. So yeah, really, really cool. Um, there's a, you know, dashboard, so it kind of saves all your stuff. So it's kind of like a, almost like a mini loom that you're sending to people. Yeah. I I love that. Yeah. Really, really powerful. Like quick and easy. And and it's gotten me twice. Like I've, I've been sent it twice and I've filled it out both times Mm -hmm. because, because usually people are sending like a, you know, hundred dollar, hundred fifty dollar product, mm-hmm. which it's digital, right? So it doesn't actually cost you much. But I right. mean, even if you were in e-com or something like that, right? Instead of just trying to collect, like Jonathan, you've probably bought stuff from uh, Amazon sellers, like supplements, and then they yeah they put a little stuffer in there and say, hey, if you want a free bottle, go here, mm-hmm. leave a review, whatever. Um, imagine if they did this, you know, once you got to that page. Right. And said, leave a video testimonial. Yeah. Because. So you add, you can add however many questions. In this case, it was what, three, you said? Yeah. They were just given like three questions. Three guidelines. questions. They That's were probably like, all you want to do. Yeah. Because otherwise it's going to get long. Their questions were, what problem did our prompts help you solve? What benefits right. have you experienced? And then what is the best, what is best about our prompts? So, mm-hmm. but yeah, you could do anything. Uh, but yeah. typically, you know, if I was writing, um, if I was requesting testimonials from somebody for a you know a piece of copy I was working on, it's usually what was the pain you started with, right? Or the frustration. How did yeah. this help you? Those are really the two main things you need. What, yeah. Where were you when you the before and after? Right? It's like sure. what was going on before you bought this? How did it help you? <clears throat> and then call to action if you want to call to action. Right. So, so yeah, really powerful. I feel like our, our buddy, David Dutton would, would love something like this. Yeah. I need to share that with him. He may be watching this. He may be. There's a couple of people on. Um, so that's cool. I'm going to check that out. Um, yeah. cause I know in my industry, I know a lot of companies who could utilize something like this. Yeah. On their. Yeah. I don't, I, this fee and it, the way it's very professional. Like it doesn't feel, it feels very well done. Mm-hmm. So I think even at a corporate level, you could use this, you know, at a bigger company that maybe is a little adverse to some of the tactics that we might use in direct response. This comes right. across to me as very clean, very professional. Sure. Um, you know, I could see somebody doing, um, you know, a stage speaker, you know, and they get a list of all the attendees and they send it yeah. out and say, Hey, what'd you like about my speech? Right. Um, mm-hmm let me know and I'll send you a free copy of the speech that you attended or a free, whatever, you know, yeah. it'd be anything really. No. Uh, yeah, so, that's... and that, like I said, I don't think it's limited to digital products. Any, any type of products could work for this. As long yeah. as you have their email, you can, you can send it to them. I like that. Cause it'll, I mean, for the, one of the hardest things is getting people to leave you a testimonial. And the biggest part, it's not that people don't want to do it. Sometimes you're just, you're having to think about it. Yeah. And I love that process where it puts, you know, like three questions up there. All you got to do is answer these questions in the video Yeah, and you're done. So, yep. yeah. Um, and there's going to be some people that just don't want to get on video and that's fine, but it, yeah. it will reduce the resistance a lot. It would be cool to, if it had it, I don't know if this, it has this function, but people that did want to be on video could just opt to, you know, mm. just record an audio, you know, it an might. audio. Cause you know, we, yeah. some people or might wonder, be in a setting, you know, they could be in a setting. They're like, ah, the lighting's not good. I don't know if I want to do this and put right. my face all, you know, out to, you know, thousands of people on their website. Yeah. Cause there is you a know, check. Just, yeah. There is a checkbox that says, and I assume you can edit this as well, but it said, yeah. Hey, you, you give us permission to use this uh, on social media for advertising, things like that. So I may see my face on there soon. Who knows? Yep. Um, so yeah, I, but I, yeah, I think it's cool. Um, 
definitely worth checking out if you've got customers and you want more testimonials. Yep. Even if you only used it for three months, you know. No doubt, man. <clears throat> stack up those testimonials. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's video. I mean, that's a good point. It's not like you have to, I mean, you pay, you know, three months at, what is it? 50, 60 bucks a month for three yeah. months and you get plenty of testimonials from that. And then you're good Man, to go. Even if you only got 10, I mean, 180 bucks for 10 yeah. testimonials. Like yep. even if you That's only did it one month, I mean, right. just blast it out to your list once or twice and yep. move on. So, um, but if you're regularly selling stuff, you know, maybe mm -hmm. you have a fairly dormant list. You could just do it one time. Yeah. But if you're selling consistently where every month you're, you know, bringing on new people, then it'd be worth it to keep it every month for sure. Right. Um, All right. Well, yeah. let's talk about gamifying. I love this. This yeah. is a great uh, way to create more engagement on your website or. Yeah, this um, was really cool. I was, I was uh, watching a client or I was trying to find a client's contact information. Um, Cause I could, I'd lost their email. So I was looking around their site, trying to find their contact info and let me show you what I came up with. And uh, I actually think she might be a, a good guest at some point too. So this is Jamie. She helps. Um, she is empowering women to ditch doubts, speak up and achieve the careers they deserve and desire. So she helps women in the corporate world, mm -hmm. like change the way they speak so that it's much more powerful and kind of more on par with the way the men talk in the business and basically not get kind of stepped on or, you know, stepped over and little things like don't apologize, say this and said, and she has mm -hmm. very specific words like don't say this, say this instead. And it's not her target is women, but anybody could use this, you know, sure. Anybody yeah. that's a little bit shy or whatever. So mm -hmm. she's got a really cool product. Um, and I've worked with her a little bit in the past, but I was going through her site and, and check this out. <laughs> Website scavenger hunt on the homepage. She's got about, it's the sec third section down. Yeah. It says website scavenger. <clears throat> it says when mm -hmm. was the last time you went on a scavenger hunt? Join the fun. Hidden in this website are three Ruth Bader Ginsburg graphics, which probably fits her target market of a corporate <laughs> person, corporate right. female. Sure. Yeah. You know, this matches with her target market. Um, I'm not gonna get excited to go find <laughs> RBG. Um <laughs> but I did think it was a cool idea yeah. for you and I, Jonathan, if we were doing it, we'd probably put some eighties reference, you know, that you had to find. Right. Of course. Um, of course. But or she, some, something football related. I, who knows? Yeah. You know, could be cool yeah. picture bug. Uh. Yeah. And it says find all three and be entered to win free access to speak up, to level up an online course valued at four ninety seven. So it's just an entry to win. It's not like you get a whole mm. free course. Uh, you could obviously change the prize to whatever you wanted. Search around the website, and when you find all three, send an email here, either with screenshots or page links and location, top, middle, bottom. Happy hunting. So, hmm. like, I immediately was like, oh, I'm going to go find these. Like, I'm just now I'm curious, right? If you were talking about this before the show. It's like, it opens up this part of your brain that's like, oh. Yeah, well, it's I an can, open loop that you got to have. You, like, you oh, got to close. I can find that. Yeah. Like, you know, um, so yeah, then you, you know, now you, now you're like, oh, well, let me scroll a little slower than I might normally, just in case, like, I don't know, are these like super tiny? Are they going to be big? Oh, there's one. <laughs> that wasn't hard. That wasn't hard. Right. But that's only one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now I'm on the, the home page. So if I go to the about page, right now, so now I'm just going to start clicking through the site. Right. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh, this is interesting. She's a corporate trainer. Oh, okay. So this forces you to literally not just spend time on the about page or. Yeah. Cause see, there's you know, not you, one on the about go, page. Right. You got to go I've, through more than. Yeah. So then I go to the next page, coach, speaker, author page. I was looking everywhere and I was like, okay, is it going to be like an icon? Is it like going to be embedded in one of the pictures of one of her presentations? Like, is it going to be in the background of something? Like I wasn't like one of these things. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I was like, oh, nothing on that page. Let me go to the next page media. And then I'm going down through here. You know, you're going to get, if you're a woman, if you're the target market, you know, you're probably going to get, hooked by one of these things that you're scrolling through. Yeah. Um, 
it's yeah, um, you know, kept going. And if nothing else, subconsciously you're getting, Oh, there it is. You found our RBG. Yeah. There's another one. Um, so I found two. It of looks them. more like RBF, but I <laughs> <laughs> um, so I never actually found the third one. I don't know where the third one is. Huh? That's weird. Yeah. So, I, well, here's another thing this does for all of you SEO people. This actually improves your um your on site time on site time, which is your bounce big, rate time. Yeah, time. So it'll help your um it'll help your rankings too. Uh, because and Google looks at that and it's kind of fun, right? It's, it's not so serious. Yeah. You know, it's like, Hey, look, look, you're basically saying, look through every page of my site mm -hmm. without saying, look through every page of my site. Right. <laughs> Cause nobody's yeah. going to do that. Even if you told them. Right. So yeah, I thought that was brilliant. I don't know if she made that up herself. Um, or if she found that somewhere, even if you don't want that, you know, that for, what is it with the discount off of, or, yeah. you know, even if you don't want that, you're like, I'm going to find this and see. Yeah, it's because it's fun, right? It, yeah. It, how many times? It's the same we reason people do it? crossword puzzles for no reason at all. You know? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and especially if you think about her market specifically, right? They're probably yeah. a little bit unhappy at work. Mm -hmm. So spending a little extra time on a site, probably yeah. not a big problem. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Let me scroll a little bit longer here before I get back to my, to my work. Um, yeah. So that, I thought that was a really cool way to get increased engagement on your site. Um, and I was even thinking like, you could do that in a sales letter. Oh, definitely. Right. It's like, you know, below is you're going to look like a word search, right? There's right. You're looking for three words as you go down this sales letter. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could use it. Yeah. And it's basically the idea of Easter eggs that they put in video games and movies and everything else. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. It works. It works every time. Yeah. All right, so we can uh, we can either move to hypnotic selling, or I've got one little thing about referrals that we can talk about. Let's do the uh, let's finish up on the referral, and then we'll jump in while we're on testimonials, referrals, and yeah. And, so, uh, um, the the testimonial thing got me to thinking about referrals, and when I used to sit at kitchen tables and do sales, and one of the best ways that I've ever found to do referrals. The biggest mistake people make with re with referrals is asking for referrals. Right. Because if you just say, hey, who do you know? Yeah. It, it It's too big of a question for the brain to comprehend. Mm -hmm. it, you know, Jonathan, you've, if you've ever been like at Target or something like that and you run into somebody and you're like, oh, my God, I know that person, but I don't know yeah. where I know them right. from. Because they're from church or they're from, it's an out of context thing, right? So you don't really, you're having a hard time placing the name and all this stuff um, because they're out of context. Your brain has them categorized as, oh, that's a church person. Or, oh, that's a work person. Or, oh, that's right. a club. That's a gym person. So what you do on referrals is you say, who do you know at your church? Who do you know that goes to your gym? Who do you yeah. know uh, that goes to your kid's school? Right. Right. Who do you play and, golf with? Who do you play golf with? Like that immediately narrows down the possibilities yeah. to a manageable number for your brain. And then the person can give you much better referrals mm -hmm. that way. And it sounds yeah. super simple. And the way you could do this online is through email, just doing the same thing. Instead of saying, Hey, we'd love for you to share this with a few people or reply back with, you know, somebody that could benefit from our service or product or whatever it's too big of a question. People are too busy and too distracted to sit down and, and calm down enough to figure out, you know, and take the time to do that. Right. So if you break it down, you, you say, Hey, and especially if you told a story that matched, right. Yes. Use some, use the, some of the stuff we've learned from other guests and be like, mm -hmm. I was on my way, you know, even if you did like what I just said, Hey, have you ever been walking through target and you see somebody, you're not sure where they are. Like you could just tell that story. Mm hmm. And then say that got me to thinking. You probably know people in your world that would love what we do, oh. um, but you've just never put two and two together, right? So, so I'm going to give you, you know, ten prompts to see if anybody comes to mind, and then you just give them a list. This also was used a lot in the um, may still be in the network marketing world mm -hmm. when you're trying to figure out who to contact and invite to yeah. the hotel, right? <laughs> to give them the pitch, <laughs> um, they they have like a name jogger sheet. 
that has like 50 of these things on it. You'll probably find it online pretty quick. Um, but yeah, it, it just, the idea here is you've got to give your brain a category. You got to narrow mm-hmm. it down to make the work easier for the, for that person. Yeah. Who's in your, uh, who do you play golf with? Who's in your, uh, Sunday school group? Who's in your Bible study? Who's in your, um, you know, who do you, uh, you know, what are some people, who are some people you go to dinner with on a regular basis? Who do you play pickleball with? Like, yep. That mean pickleball, you know, that's social activity, right? I mean, I mean, not me that? yet, not me yet, but yeah. <laughs> I know, everybody keeps talking about it. I know it's going to get, I'm going to get sucked in. Um, You will, you will be playing. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yep. See here. I found it. Let me show the screen real quick. Um, Who's your debt? Ah, yeah. Who does your taxes? Yeah. So, um, so this is literally like, I just typed in memory jogger MLM and this, this came up. So um, (laughs) who's your insurance? Who? I think some of these are, are too narrow. Yeah. Um, who do you buy your clothes from? Who sold your house? Who's your doctor? Taxes. Um, so anyway, there's different lists like that available on the interwebs, mm-hmm. but that's a, the main, the, the core idea here is you've got to give your brain works by, we are categorizing machines. Yeah. Right? It's, the first thing our brain tries to do is categorize something to see if it's useful or not. And it files it away in a category. Mm -hmm. So if you want to access it, you have to access it through categories as well. So church people live in the church category in your brain. And if you ask about, you could talk about the club all day long or the gym all day long. And that person, unless they happen to also be at the gym, will never come to mind. So that's, that's how you, how you can increase your fer- referrals by at least 10 X. Uh, yep. And I literally used to do this with a notepad at kitchen tables mm-hmm. uh, and just. And one, and one question, instead of going down all these different rabbit trails of like trying to find just, you can start by saying, what are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do? Yeah. I mean, what do you do outside of work? Well, and, and then and if you know, you know you're going to, yeah. And if you know, you're going to be doing this at the end. Mm-hmm. You ask those questions during the presentation. Right. So then you kind of have a running list of, okay, right. they go to church, they go to gym, they do this, exactly. they do this. And then you can come back at the end and say, by the way, I know you said you go to church. Who do you know at church that right. now it's much more flowy and casual Yeah. as opposed to like, where do you go to church? Like it being 20 questions and you're following up. Well, who do you know there? Right. right. Then it feels like an interrogation. <laughs> um so it's, it takes some practice and it takes some, some forethought to really make that smooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So. No, it's good. Um, all right. It's Let's, good reminder. Yeah. Tell your boys that when they're looking for new landscaping. Work. <laughs> exactly. Who do you know? Um, of course it's near the end of the season now, so. Yeah. Well, they should be hanging Christmas lights. <laughs> that's what all, that's, that's what all exactly the, right. Uh, I'm telling them that the, there's gutters that need to be cleaned and. Yes. All sorts of things right. that need to happen leaves, during the leaves. cold. Yep. Leaves got to be raked. Exactly. That's a big one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's what most companies do now. They go from cutting grass to raking leaves to hanging Christmas lights. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then it's, then you get into aeration, fertilization, mm-hmm. and then back into mowing. Yep. Yeah. These, they figured, companies or have if figured you, out. if you live up in, um, you know, if you're up in Michigan, you're, you're snow plowing. Uh, snow plowing. Yeah. Or, snow plow on the front of that truck. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. And yep. So cleaning, uh, shoveling snow off sidewalks, but yep. All right. So I wanted to, uh, before we close out, I wanted to mention again, I'm not going to get into too much of this book. Um, it's called the persuasion story, <clears throat> story code, David Garfinkel. We're going to try to get him on again Yep. to one of our shows, but it reminded me, uh, I'm going to cue this up here an article on hypnotic selling. Uh, let's see, pull this up here. Are you pulling up the spinny wheel? The spinny wheel. Yeah. To make it hypnotize me. <laughs> That's no, this will be a, um, it'll be a, a little watch on a, on a string, oh, a string. A pendulum going on. I like it. <laughs> 
So it reminds me, this is actually a pretty good article and we'll share this on our show page, hypnotic selling techniques. Um, yeah, you're going to have to make that a little bigger. Even all still. Right, let's see. It's tiny see that? print. There we go. Right there. Right there. Um, Dr. Donald Moyne. Um, and this is on selling power. I, uh, I get this subscription on a regular basis. Oh, wow. You're a real salesperson if you get selling power. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be physical. It's all digital now. So I just subscribe to it. It shows yeah, up on my iPad. I, I, used, I used to get that magazine back in the mm-hmm. print print days. I love yeah. it. Oh yeah. It was a good one. It was a good one. There's some of their articles are kind of bl- lame, like, like the digital version. Now it's got, it's filled. It's kind of like uh digitally interactive. So you've got articles along with video embedded in the oh, cool. you know digital magazines. It's pretty cool. Um, but here's some things. As, so this got me thinking about, because there's a section on the book called uh, Powerful Stories, uh, you know, using word pictures throughout, which is everybody should be doing this when it comes to selling any kind of sales persuasion, any type of persuasion environment, whether you're speaking from, um, you know, from the platform, if you're speaking from a one to many type of activity, whether you're on a webinar, whether you're speaking live to an audience, or if it's just one to one selling, everybody needs to be going through uh, these techniques. And one of the most important is um, paint, painting vivid word pictures. Yeah. Um, you know, hypnosis is as much, it says it's based on mental imagery. Um, so you always got to be painting vivid word pictures. And the more, the more, the more clear, the more precise the picture, the better. And it always reminds me, it goes back to that ad. What's the famous, um, Oh, Bill Bonner's ad for an international living ad for Bill. Yes. That's one of my all time favorites. Yeah. (laughs) Like the headline is like 50 words long, 120 (laughs) words long or something. Exactly. So you're painting the image and, and beforehand, like on this article, sell to their dreams. So these things, to me, these things kind of go hand in hand. You can sell people on their dreams while painting those vivid pictures. So, you know, you've been in the, uh, you know, you've been in the financial newsletter business industry for a long time, or you were there, Sean. And, yep. you know, these are obviously the, some of the key strategies in any copywriter, whether you're face-to-face selling, copywriting, presentations, whatever, is painting those word pictures of what it would be like to be where that person, you know, if that person could retire and yep. live on the beach, um, sitting on the beach in Hawaii, you know, or wherever, you know, retired with a drink in hand, you know, with your, um, you know, with, with, uh, your servants <laughs> bringing you anything you want to, you know? So yep. it's, it's all about the emotional aspect of, of creating those vivid pictures. So, um, this is, this was a kind of an interesting, there's an interesting section in, um, and, and I don't want to give away everything today, but it's how to add power to your story um, in this book by David Garfinkel. But he's got two um, he's got two word pictures. So I want to get into these, Sean, and I'll try to go through these real quick to see which one you think is kind of a better word picture. Now, there's two of them. It describes. Um, so it's uh, well, it says we'll use. Uh, Word pictures in a less frightening uh, context uh, compare these two stories about about a uh, hypothetical baseball pitcher training product. Okay, so we're trying to sell a uh, a product called Strike Zone Method. Okay. All right, here's the first one. Strike Zone Method gives you unparalleled accuracy and control. Batters will hold you in high esteem but have... uh, but have little affinity for you. Your pitching style will be consistent and fruit <clears throat> and fruitful and any variation you encounter will not detract from your objectives. That's real great coffee. Ed. <laughs> I'm going with number two. <laughs> I don't even have to read number two, right? Yeah. <laughs> it says well, when strike zones occur, uh, when, uh, when strikeouts occur, this will, uh, this will only be a predictable result that favors your team and keeps the other team at bay. That's awful. Well, right, even, if it, so, even if it was simpler copy, it still is not going to be as powerful as the second one. Because yeah, it's, exactly. it's all, 
But here's what, and a lot of people who are in copywriting, I mean, they would just laugh at this, like when I begin, but you don't realize I'm in a, this is, this is par for the course in the industry that I'm in. And I laugh at this because I see this all the time with engineers and they always gravitate to this first one. (laughs) Yeah. The case studies, the white papers, they all sound like that. So here's the second one. The strike zone method gives you the power to throw the ball exactly where you want to every time. Batters will look at you with fear when you are on the mound as you wind up and deliver a uh, speeding fastball that crosses the plate with precision and confidence. You'll never be surprised by the swing and miss that puts frowns of frustrations, uh, of frustration on the batter's face. So, it just painted a picture there. Like instead of the a first lot of one, pictures there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're, um, you know, the batter across from you or in front of you is going to look at you with fear. Yep. Um, you know, as you're on the mound, I mean, that, that paints a pretty, pretty big picture of pretty powerful image there. Yeah. I didn't get any images from the first one really. Cause I'm just thinking about the words. So much. I was, I was trying to define the words <laughs> the whole time. I was like, Oh, yeah. So that's just a lesson like in imagery, you know, we, we sometimes, and I think it's more geared toward people who are not natural copywriters out there need to understand that, you know, it's not like, uh, stop giving facts and features and all of this stuff, but well, present and, the, and I can see like the first one, it's, it sounds right. It's, it's, it's kind of descriptive, right? Yeah, right. But yeah, it doesn't actually paint a picture in your mind. And that's, that's the big difference. And we've talked before about, um, what's the, uh, your, you bought it for your kids, the not breakthrough advertising, but the the companion book that goes with it. Um, the workbook where you write out stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, but that, that workbook is that's all it is. It's like showing you how to build picture sentences mm-hmm. yeah. that, that show up as a picture in your mind, because yep. that's what people, that's like, like you said, that's what puts people into this hypnotic trance like states. It's why movies are so powerful because the, it is imagery on the screen. Yeah. You know, if it was just text, wouldn't be all that exciting. It's the difference, no. you know, and even books, like if you read a, the difference between a good book the reason people can get lost in a fiction book is because it is constantly painting those pictures for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas if a nonfiction book, it's information and you don't get as many visual pictures. So it's a little easier to put it down. Yeah. Whereas a good fiction book, man, you can just plow through that thing. Cause you just 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 fall into it. Yeah. You fall into a trance, right? Cause you're, you're seeing that movie in your head. Mm-hmm. I'm reading a series right now. It's four books long and I'm on the fourth book. And like, I mean, I've just plowed through. Yeah. It's, it's mm-hmm. all fiction. Yeah. But it's fiction written about stuff that, you know, it's, it's basically like an allegory type book, but mm-hmm. they're really, I've really enjoyed them for that mm-hmm. reason. It's been yeah. a nice break from the type of books that I typically read. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some writers out there that I'm a big, um, uh, I used to be a big uh, John Grisham fan because he was, I mean, it, he was such a good writer. And back then, I haven't written, I haven't read a lot of his stuff in a while, but yeah, um, I know that uh, Stephen King, although I don't like a lot of his politics and some of his, because he introduces that in some of his books, yeah. but um, he is a good storyteller. Yeah. And I don't he, like most of, I don't, I'm just not in the horror genre or the, that yeah. type of, book but yeah he's a great writer and his book on writer on writing is worth reading yeah yep um even that's the first book my first copy chief gave me to read was on writing by Stephen. right yeah yep um and the stuff he talks about in there is is perfect because he you got to be careful not to over describe Mm -hmm. because if you over describe a scene for instance in the scene you just read like read Mm -hmm. the first sentence of that that scene if you if you can find it real quick on the second one yeah um the strike zone method gives you the power to throw the ball exactly where you want to every time yeah so you just not telling you where you'll throw it right where you want to throw it. right it's not saying you know the power to throw the the ball to the lower right corner of right. the strike yeah. zone right yeah. 
So it gives you a little freedom as the reader mm -hmm. to develop your own picture where if you overdevelop that picture, it gets annoying. Yep. It becomes too vivid and too detailed and you end up fighting. In fact, this is what they say in hypnosis training. You have to be careful not to over describe because it can knock right. people out of hypnosis. Cause if you're, if you just, let's say you're, say you, um, you're walking along the beach mm -hmm. is something you want to say in hypnosis. The problem is everybody has their own idea of what a beach, the perfect beach looks like. Sure. Right. I mean, there's the beach. If you want to be in the panhandle of Florida and 30 a, which is, I know David Dutton's favorite place <laughs> in the world to be. Um, That's it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got the stickers all over his car. It's, it's, it's annoying how much yeah. he likes that place. Um, or, you know, you may be more of a Hawaii beach, which is a lot coarser sand, but you know, it's got mountains in the background. Mm -hmm. So if you over describe a scene, it can also hurt you and knock people out of hypnosis. Cause that's not what they think. Right. So it's a, it is a little bit of a balance, um, to pull them into that world and, and to keep it flowing. Plus if yeah. you just, plus your letter would your, your copy would be so long if you over described it. Right. And it would take forever to get through. Yep. <clears throat> That's why you see these 600 page novels. It could probably be 300 because they mm -hmm. over describe a lot of stuff. So, yep. so yeah, that's um, yeah. We'll definitely uh, reach out to David. Maybe I'll send him this link. So he knows he has to come on. Mm -hmm. now that we've yeah. talked about him. Uh, <laughs> uh, he said, send him an email. I just forgot to last week. Got busy. Okay. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It's sending stuff. the previous and then we'll, uh, we'll just say we'd like to, talk about your book um it's funny sean talking about the i think about the priming effect of um you know images you know and stories and and things like that that conjures up but i i thought it was interesting i walked into a um i was in the i walked into the front entrance of a manufacturing plant yesterday when i was in the nashville area and um on this huge as you walk in the lobby, you know, you're, you're, you first walk in the lobby, but before you walk, you know, after you leave the lobby area, you walk into their showroom. And mm -hmm. this is a company that makes, um, it's like cast, uh, cast stone products. So they, it's not real stone. It's like a, it's like faux stone. Right. But so they make like, like the, fireplace mantles or the exactly the stuff. And outside. even some on, on housing, you know, right, housing the, too. The lower level of stone that you might have around mm -hmm. the house and stuff like that. Beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful stuff too. Cause they have all of these. It's basically this, hollow rocks. Yeah. It's hot. Exactly. And they have all of these color designs they have for it. So if you want like a, a rustic Cabernet, you know, they have yeah. their own rustic Cabernet and it's a combination of stack stone colors and it's, it's really pretty. And then, you know, so, and they have all of these visuals on their wall, but before you get into the showroom that shows you all that you walk into the lobby area and on this enormous, uh, big screen TV is it's on silent. So there's no, uh, you know, there's no audio coming. It shows you these visuals of these, I don't know. It must be like Jamaica or something, but it's like beautiful be blue water down in the Caribbean. Yeah. And it's just like, it, obviously it looked like it was done with drone footage, yeah. but it's just gorgeous views. And it's like, shows you nothing but peace and tranquility. Yes. Yeah, so you're instantly in this place of just calm. <laughs> and I just, I was hypnotized. I, 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 you know, I walked in and I was just staring at that. I was like, wow, that's like, how big was the screen? It was huge. I would say it's like 70, you know, 70, yeah. 80 inch yeah. big screen on the, you know, as you walk in the lobby, Sounds you like got to hit that. You got to walk, you got to, you can't help but, you know, right. just run into that before you go into the showroom. So you're instantly kind of primed, Programmed. you're, yeah, you're primed. calmed down. It's like, yeah. Ooh, man, that's nice. I would love to be on vacation there. And it's like, you're seeing all the scenes of just relaxation and, lounging on the beach and you know you know just gorgeous blue water you know for yeah. miles so so is this like a like consumers go in here or is it more b2b uh i think both i mean there, yeah. there are people that want this you know on their individual and then they also I, I would say they probably sell to contractors too yeah um as well so Which but i would say ultimately it's going to be they're I think they're selling to the person that's building the house or doing the remodeling or yeah. 
having that put in their home or in their business. So a contractor might even send somebody there yeah, and say, Hey, exactly. Go to the showroom, yep. check, pick your colors, all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. That's, that's really, that's really clever. Yeah, um, it was. I was like, I, this is brilliant. Cause I mean, I was yeah. completely before I wa- walked into their showroom, which their showroom is really nice too. Um, but you got that priming effect before you went in. And I know all of that was intentional. So yeah, it makes me want to put that on my hero image on my website. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, Ooh, cause it does, it kind of puts you in a trance, you know, yeah, just like, like a, in the hypnotic copy puts you in a trance, you know, you're talking about the images lounging on, you know, uh, well, it makes, lounging on the beach. It makes sense too, because you know, when your brain is in a threat response, mm-hmm. you know, it, it just shuts down. It doesn't want right. to, does it's either going to fight or flee, right? Yeah, exactly. Which yeah. neither one of those are good for a sales conversation. No, so no, because you you're always on, you're always on alert, and you should. want to lower the, the, uh, the level of alert. <laughs> yeah, which which makes that adds a whole new perspective to why the international living, yeah, lead mm-hmm. works so well because it does mm-hmm. put you in that same kind of on the beach sipping right. a drink. You're right. the gardener's gardening. The, you know, all that stuff like that's, uh, yeah, that may be a whole nother, re- it just puts you in this place of safety. Your brain yeah. is like, oh, okay, this is a safe space. Yep. And now it's open and receptive to whatever mm-hmm. the message is. That's and that video was message. just on loop. Like it would, yeah. it, I mean, you could watch it to a certain end and they would just loop back around to the, yeah. just keep playing. Probably like 4k or 8k. Oh yeah. It was gorgeous. It was like the highest resolution. It was definitely 4k, super high yeah. resolution. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the, I mean, now they got 8K. I mean, you go to Best mm-hmm. Buy and look at some of those 8K TVs. It's yeah. like, oh my God, like you can almost like yeah, this was, touch it. Yep. This was as clear as, I mean, like you just being there. It was amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I'm surprised they didn't have like just the kind of the sound of the waves going in the background too. But. Yeah. No sound whatsoever. I mean, it's yeah. just throw some sand on the floor. I would put some music with it, you know, some calm music. You yeah. Know, I'd put some like, wave noise like gentle mm-hmm. waves mm-hmm. but you know sometimes that can sound cheesy and yeah. it can be distracting if it's not really good audio right so i could see but you i could see doing like a breeze with some seagulls or something yeah. in the air or some clinking I, one of my favorite sounds in the world most soothing sounds in the world is a sailboat mast clinking like the mm. you know, the pulleys of the sailboat yeah yeah clinks against the mast right um ryan here my friend had, on the lake He's right across from a sailboat marina. Mm-hmm. Um, not anymore because the lake's gone pretty much, but because he was on a <laughs> cove and that lake is sure. dried up. Dried up. Wow. Um, but yeah, that it used to be that, you know, just with the gentle waves, the, those little clinks of the sailboat mast is just so soothing. It's almost like sure. a wind chime. Wow. Um, so yeah, I could see, I could maybe I'll put that on the website, load a little clinking <laughs> sound. Just puts people in a trance, man, every yeah, time. It does. All right, man. Good stuff. I will uh, yeah. try to get with David. I doubt he'll be on next week. He's probably, oh, that's fine. He's probably, uh, but we'll get him booked for either next Friday or the Friday after. Okay. Um, yeah. Very it's good. Been a, it's been a good show. Absolutely. Good stuff. We'll put some links to these um, things that we've discussed today on the testimonials and the link to the article on hypnotic selling and yeah, uh, all of this stuff. So. All right. Well, to all of our listeners, you can find us on uh, persuasionbythepint.com over at persuasionbythepint.com. You can find us on all of your favorite podcast platforms, whatever you listen to podcasts on. You can also check our Facebook group out over at uh, uh, facebook.com forward slash persuasionbythepint. That's where we kind of stream all of our stuff to it over at Facebook. And, um, Sean, it's been fun, man. Have a great weekend. Opening um, first weekend of college football officially tomorrow. So, uh, like the little teams, junior yeah, high, junior high teams. <laughs> we got a little Notre Dame. If it, you know, yeah, Notre that's what Dame. I said. That's what I said. <laughs> Go Navy! I'll be rooting for uh, for those Navy midshipmen uh, yeah. tomorrow evening. So, man, yeah, I, I watched the last preseason NFL game last night because. Tamara's an Eagles fan. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that was on last night. They lost, but, you know, Jalen didn't play. So, ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So all the, all of the, uh, they're get people are fighting for opportunities. So those are yeah. the, those are the people that get the playing time are the yep. ones that are just fighting for a roster spot. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. Football's back. Um, yeah. excited to see that back starting next week. Officially next week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Unofficially tomorrow. So yeah. <laughs> I guess, I mean, that's, it is nice. They pulled a little bit bigger team up. Um, yeah, it's gonna be your, wild the uh, next couple of years for sure with all these all these instead uh, of Hawaii and Boise State or something like that. Yeah, yeah we get ball we get a little bit of a name brand. Although yeah. I'm not big 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 Irish fan, but who I cares? Mean, we've really got to. I mean, for Georgia, we've really got to wait like three weeks before we get a. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> before we get I a know. name. Yep, that's right. That's right. All right. But it's back. Um, but yeah, we'll see you all next time around. Um, it's been uh, it's been fun. This will be episode uh, three something, and three twenty two next week. Three twenty two. Yeah, we'll see you next week. See ya.